Welcome back to Endless Ocean. There is trouble afoot. Ah! God, that wetsuit looks ugly. How could I ever sneak with a wetsuit this noisy? Ah, uh, this. One of the more kind of strange and pointless additions to this game. The Aquarium. Yes, you have to be able to go inside an aquarium to stock an aquarium. Fun fact, everybody. Hmm. Someone with extensive diving experience that goes in the ocean? I don't know. Who could that be? It's Skippy. He wants Skippy to do it. Skippy's gonna do it, right? Is it Skippy? It's Skippy, right? Oh. I guess we can do that. Yes, we can sail our boat up an island to an aquarium. Because why not? We'll do that in a second. First, let's go over here, see if we have any new visitors. And it certainly looks like we do. Aww. Aww. It's a Weddell seal. The Weddell seal is a fairly abundant Arctic seal. They have a small claw on their hind limbs, that's where they get their scientific name from. Normally you wouldn't find them this north, but hey, it's endless ocean. And what do we have over here? Spotted sea. Oh, come on! Th that scientific name's just lazy. Just, just why? Wh what's the point of that even? For reference, Foca is Latin for seal, and Larja is Greek for seal. Seal transition. Let's see if we can get both going at the same time. Oh wait, no, no, Spot Seal's running away. Oh well. Wanted to see if I get them both rolling at the same time. Wasn't quick enough. So let's go check our mail. And look into getting to that aquarium. Yes, yes. Diving guide report, how do we do? Let's see... Our performance... Four stars out of five. Well, I guess we lost a star for, you know, losing him for that time. Oh well. Good enough, I suppose. And some location info. That is way too many exclamation marks and question marks. Man, we missed on seeing a whale. Hope we see a whale pretty soon. That would be fantastic. Oh, did not mean to leave there. Oh well. And as you can see, we just head over to the island itself and just go straight to the aquarium. Eh, nah. we'll just go for the default. And this is the aquarium. So one of the mechanics of the game is that any animal you encounter in-game, with one exception, 
you can introduce to the aquarium. You can stock it with that animal. There are limited numbers of animals you can put in here, based on size restrictions, but you can put basically anything we've encountered in here. It's not particularly too interesting. To be honest, I'm not very keen on it. It's just a big square and you can put silly things in. It allows you to interact with any animal you've encountered in the wild just so you can encounter it again and just run into it, and, you know. You can't learn anything from an animal that you have in the aquarium. You can't become friendlier with it, but you can sure look at it. Let's see, let's add some manta rays too. No. Uh, well, these are fairly big ones. I don't think we have any four square sizes. I add some cowtails, a uh, bottlenose. Hmm, what else? Uh, some octopuses. We did a segment on those. What else should we do? Uh, I'm playing English. Uh, not a little flounder. Uh, some self and tang. We run into those all the time. Of course, bicolor parrotfish. Why not? That that'll do for a start. And here we are. Pretty busy looking tank now. And that, that's really it to the aquarium mechanic. You put things in it and you can look at them. Like, yep, that's some uh, bicolor parrotfish right there. And they sure are swimming. It gets a bit ridiculous later. Because you can add any animal to your aquarium. And you might notice this isn't a very big aquarium. It, it's big enough, but it will be not quite big enough for some of the things you can put in it. I'm probably never going to come back here again, though. There's really nothing here that I care about. But I suppose this would be a good chance to show off the underwater pen, because I haven't done that yet. It's not very easy to do anything with it. At all. Let's get back to doing something more worthwhile. See, we check our mail. Wait a minute, it looks like there's something different on the boat now. Picks from Mono Loi. Email from a Doug. Basically, he wants us to take pictures of fish. But we don't have a camera! Oh well. Such is life. Are you reading our mail? That ain't right. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Why do you have an underwater camera? You, you don't even scuba dive. That, that makes no sense. You can't even swim. Why do you have this? We'll be doing some of this. Not very much of this, but we'll be doing some. Because you get something for doing it. Something quite important. But first, let's go over here. Hmm, got two jaunty looking fellows. Ah, the California sea lion. Now this fellow, it's a little special. 
The California sea lion, Solophus californianus, is a coastal sea lion found on the west coast of North America. Their scientific name refers to the large crest of bone that appears at the top of males' heads when they reach sexual maturity. An extremely abundant species, there is estimated to be around 188,000 California sea lions in the United States alone. Their population is not only large, but growing at a rate of around 5% per year. They are predominantly found around the waters of California, though they can be found up and down the coast in both directions. They are rather large animals. Males can grow to 850 pounds and 2.4 meters, 8 feet, in length. Females are significantly smaller, reaching around 220 pounds and 2 meters, 6.5 feet. Sea lions get this big on a large diet of seafood. They eat a varied diet of several species of fish, especially salmon, squids, and clams. Males eat around 8,900 pounds of food per year. Females eat around 4,000 pounds per year. For reference, humans eat around 1,700 pounds of food a year. They are well known for their barks. Males bark to establish their territory. Females bark to communicate to each other, and pups both bark when they're alarmed. I've not found any scientific evidence, but I'm pretty sure they'll also bark for the hell of it. Bark, 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 bark. The California sea lion is a very social and intelligent animal. They will cooperatively fish when necessary, even with other animals like dolphins. Their gatherings tend to be incidental and along gender lines unless it's during mating season. They often gather on beaches and man-made objects, warming and drying themselves or sleeping. Their intelligence and sociability has made them quite useful for humans. Many are trained for use in circuses and marine parks, where they are capable of complex tricks and behaviors. Almost all circus seals are, in fact, California sea lions. Their intelligence and trainability has made them heavily used as part of the U.S. Navy Marine Mammal Program alongside the bottlenose dolphin. This program studies and uses marine mammals to assist in military action, performing tasks such as ship and harbor protection, mine detection and clearance, and equipment recovery. Marine mammal teams have been deployed to war zones since the 1960s, with individuals serving in both Vietnam and Iraq. When on patrol, Navy sea lions at spot divers underwater will attach an alert device to the enemy's limbs, which send up a buoy above the water to both restrain the diver and alert Navy personnel. The Navy claims that they've never trained any marine mammals for assault or kill purposes, as they can't differentiate between friend and foe vessels or divers. But know this. Never fuck with a California sea lion. It will murder you. So you may be wondering, what's the difference between a sea lion and a seal? Well, sea lions are also known as eared seals. Sea lions have visible pinnae, or external ear flaps, over their ears. Seals lack these. Sea lions are also capable of supporting their body weight on their flippers. Seals lack the musculature and general structure to do so, and they just scoot around on their bellies. Uh, let's, let's go over here. See if we can knock out a bit of this area that we haven't dived yet. See if we find anything interesting. Do we still have our sea lion friends with us? Yes, we do. They came for a ride. Anyways, let's go down with Skippy. See if we find anything. Maybe Skippy won't be as much of a dick this time. Let's see. First, let's see if we can get Skippy to be a bit more amicable. Maybe now he'll actually listen to us. Check out our whistle, Skippy. It's a pretty sweet whistle. Don't you like it? Uh, well, eh. we'll see if it has any effect. So there's a big old area over here we have yet to go to. see if we can manage to find our way over there. Well, I guess we can't go over this rock to get to it. 
might have to go over and around. So pinnipeds like sea lions, seals, and walruses are members of Caniforma, the dog-like carnivore suborder. Their closest near relative to the other caniforms is probably something close to a bear, evolving around 23 million years ago. This proto-seal looks something like a... almost like a sea otter, actually. They're not actually related to sea otters, but it looks something close to it, like a meter-long sea otter. Oh hey! What have we here? Hmm, it's not really sunshiny at this time of night, but, uh, I'll take your word for it. Let's see if we can find some interesting new stuff here. It's some common dolphins. I'm having enough trouble with my bottlenose friend, let alone these guys. But let's give it a shot, at least getting to know them a bit. Oh, camera. Um, well, dolphins like whistles. Let's give that a shot. Come on. Yep, that works. A common dolphin. 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 Ah! That's so lazy! Same case as last time. Dolphin, dolphin. But hey, it's this guy. California sea lions are pretty curious, actually, about divers. They'll follow them around. Not necessarily in the game, but... There's something shiny in the beach. What do we have here? Ah, a treasure. And I believe another Stark's Demoiselle, maybe? No, don't, don't, don't pet the picture frame. Nothing happens when you do that. Yep, Stark's Demoiselle. Hmm. Might have to look into that picture frame. See if we could divine some secrets from it. You know, this is, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of sand here that, that gives, makes it kind of beachy, but it doesn't look to be much of a, uh, no, not, not much of an above water beach. In fact, there, there does not seem to be a beach around at all. Oh, there's someone over there, but that's quite some distance away. Guess it's a beach you can only appreciate when you're underwater. So I was talking about the taxonomic order Carnivora. Carnivora is broken into two, largely separate groups. The cat likes the filiforms, and the dog likes the caniforms. The caniforms include dogs, some extinct dog bears, the bear, the pinnipeds like the seals and sea lions, the mustelids, including otters, weasels, badgers, that sort of thing. In the cat likes you have the cats, the hyenas, the civets and gennets, and the mongooses. Yes, the mongooses and the mustelids aren't related. They have similar niches, but they're not related at all. Hmm. Oh, there's our penguins. First time we've seen them in the wild. Let's interact with our first one underwater. Perhaps our friend Hulkamat can tell us something about penguins. I don't know shit about penguins, except they're chill as fuck. But here's some cool ass penguin clips. Stay there, Hi, Cookie. Hey, Star Cook. 
Hi, Cookie. How you doing? This is our friend Cookie. He's sort of the mascot. If you notice on his foot, oop, he's got a bandage because he has bumblefoot, and so he have to change his socks every day. But isn't he a cutie? Come on, Cookie. Come on, Cookie. Come on, Cookie. Come on, little one. Come here, Cookie. Come on, Cookie. She's a pretty bird. There he is. Ooh, ooh. Sorry about that. There's Cookie. Come on. Come on, Cookie. No? That's it? That's all we do today? Good boy. I finally got that on tape. Very good, Tex. It's happening in Japan. Meet Lala, a 10-year-old king penguin who used to call the Antarctic home. Lala lives here with the Nishimoto family. Send it. And this king penguin is really living like a king. He's got his own room complete with a powerful air conditioner and free run of the property. Yes, yes, yes. But Lala isn't your average couch penguin. He likes to travel. That's when the Nishimotos help pack him up for a trip into town. Aside. When Lala hits the road, his favorite destination is no surprise. Where else? The fish store. Sardines and mackerel are his favorite. He loves to eat them. He is adorable. Adorable, yes, and deserving of a doggy bag for the trip home. <laughs> Lala grew up in the cold Antarctic and now lives in a city known for its heat and humidity. As he heads home, he seems to pause at this soda machine. Then moves on, possibly realizing he left this change in his other suit. No problem, just head into a neighbor's yard for a quick hose down. Ah, refreshing, then back on the road. Once home, Lala gets his knapsack unpacked, checks out his room, And at the end of a long day, spends a little quality time with the rest of the family. Dr. Andy, is there such thing as insanity among penguins? I try to avoid the definition of insanity or derangement. I don't mean that uh, a penguin might believe he, he or she is Lenin, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. But uh, could they just go crazy because they've had enough of their colony? Um, well, I've never seen a penguin bashing its head against a rock. Um, they do get disoriented. They end up in places they shouldn't be, a long way from the ocean. These penguins are all heading to the open water to the right. But one of them caught our eye, the one in the center. He would neither go towards the feeding grounds at the edge of the ice, nor return to the colony. 
Shortly afterwards, we saw him heading straight towards the mountains, some 70 kilometers away. Dr. Ainley explained that even if he caught him and brought him back to the colony, he would immediately head right back for the mountains. But why? One of these disoriented or deranged penguins showed up at the New Harbor diving camp, already some 80 kilometers away from where it should be. The rules for the humans are, do not disturb or hold up the penguin. Stand still and let him go on his way. And here, he is heading off into the interior of the vast continent. With 5,000 kilometers ahead of him, he is heading towards certain death. Thank you, Hulkamat, for that lovely introduction. And what have we found here? The Wild Channel. Huh. Well, let's check it out. Fun thing about penguins, they're pretty well studied, broadly, and we know quite a lot about their evolutionary history. We can trace their evolution back to the Cretaceous extinction event. We know where they were, we know where you could find them, we know roughly kind of where they and how they evolved. Their ancestor probably looks something like a flightless diving cormorant. Though they probably flew around the time of the Cretaceous extinction event, as flight is pretty important during extinction events. We have here the green sea turtle. I'd like to tell you a little about it. The green sea turtle, Chelonia midas, is a large sea turtle of the family Chelonidae. It's found in the tropical and subtropical seas around the world with two distinct and largely isolated populations in the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. Looking at these turtles, you might notice that green sea turtles aren't actually very green. The green in their name comes from the color of the fat below their shell. A bit morbid to think of once you realize that they probably found this out while eating it, but such as it is. Like all sea turtles, the green sea turtle nests on beaches. It digs a small hole with its hind fins, which it fills with eggs and then covers again with sand. After a period, the eggs hatch, and in the morning sun, the hatchings make their way to the water. Unlike other sea turtles, the green sea turtle is largely herbivorous, feeding on seagrasses. When they are juveniles, they live in the open sea, feeding on small fish and other similarly sized prey. As they mature, they move increasingly towards the shore, where seagrass meadows can be found. Adult turtles will grow up to 1.5 meters, 5 feet in length, with an average weight between 240 and 420 pounds. They are fairly endangered, like many of the ocean sea turtles. They are often poached for their meat and skin, and their fat and cartilage are off-sought as ingredients in turtle soup. They are caught in nets on accident, which can be lethal when the nets lack turtle excluder devices. Habitat destruction has greatly affected their nesting as well. Sea turtles again only nest on beaches, and usually on very set beaches at that. The green sea turtles' nesting locations are particularly very threatened due to being very high activity beaches, and high intensity lights at night can often distract their young, leading them into roads and towns in their confusion. I actually saw green sea turtles in the wild when I was in Hawaii. I dove with a few, and saw a few when I was on shore eating. Here's some pictures I took. Mm -hmm. 
Skippy, what are you yelling about? Oh, he wants to show us something. Right here. If, wait, no, right there. It's a fish! It's the tiger puffer. Don't want to eat those. At least, without them being prepared by someone with the proper license. Puffer fish are very poisonous. Never eat their liver, ever. You will die. Or Japanese Jack. Well, folks, it's our first whale. And he is a big one. I'm going to hand you over to Trokajo, who knows quite a bit about this whale. The North Atlantic right whale is the fourth largest creature on the planet, after the blue whale and its other two right whale cousins. A large baleen whale, they can reach lengths of 18 meters and weigh 117 tons. They can be easily distinguished by the large white callosities on their heads. We honestly have no idea why they have these callosities, but they make great identifiers for individuals as they form unique patterns. For you testicle fans out there, this species has the largest testicles on the planet. Not not sure why you'd be a fan of this, but hey, whatever floats your boat. Speaking of floating, 40% of the North Atlantic white whale's body weight is blubber, which is actually pretty low density compared to other whales. They're also among one of the most endangered whales out there. Now, right whale may seem like a strange name. It's, well, whale is perfectly symmetrical. The name of the right whale goes back to whaling, like most things involving this whale. Way back in the day, heyday whaling, they just go out and stick the fuckers until they die and then wait for the corpse to resurface somewhere. Not the right whale, though. Remember what I said about their builder being low density? Yeah, it turns out right whales float when they die, unless they were the right whales to kill, which is really kind of a macabre name for them. Right whales originally hunted for the oil until we figured out, oh hey, we can cure and preserve meat. In the 1700s, American whalers set out from Massachusetts and would take hundreds of right whales a year. There's even a record of 29 right whales being taken in Cape Cod in one day. By 1750, so many right whales had been killed that there was no viability in hunting them commercially. The whalers left for the South Atlantic, leaving only an estimated 100 right whales remaining. As of the latest census data, scientists know of at least 361 recognized individuals known to have been alive in 2005. It's estimated that 400 North Atlantic right whales exist today, mostly in the western part of the Atlantic. In the winter, they head south to Georgia and Florida to give birth. It's not uncommon to see right whales when they migrate. However, approaching within 500 feet of right whales intentionally is a violation of federal law, so don't, don't do that. Now... In real life, you really probably wouldn't encounter a North Atlantic right whale in the Pacific Ocean. You'd find them near New England and up and down the eastern coast of North America. 
as well as towards the coast of Europe. In the Pacific, you normally would encounter the North Pacific right whale, or if you are south enough, the southern right whale. Though, to be honest, there is some debate about how separate these taxonomical groups are, if they're capable of interbreeding, and so forth. Their regions are fairly isolated, though, and at this time they are treated as separate species. Brilliant animals, though. Wait, did that whale just vanish on me? Uh, I just think I lost it. Oh, there it is. You can see the large callosities on its head. They are quite big. Whales are such marvelous animals. I really do think so. I try not to get too weird and overly, yeah, dolphins and whales are so lovely, yeah, like some people do, but they really are awesome animals. Small little tunnel here. Rather sort of strange. Seems like we're reaching the end of our dive range, though. Yep. Think it might be time to head back to the boat. Did not mean to look at that. Oh well. Yes, I do believe we've seen most of what we can see in the area. So let's head on back up. Missed a little to the south there, but I'm sure we'll get that later. Boat cinematic. Mutton chops everywhere. Yeah. It's actually a picture of Wilford Brimley. For centuries, he's told us the horrors of the diabetes. Yes, that, that, that is exactly what I'm saying. So Doug, not only does photography, he does hairstyling, I, I guess? Something? Let's go look at our items, though. We've yet to have a chance to do that. We've got our dolphin medal. A part of a whale god mirror. Interesting. And our picture frame. All the stuff in here goes to a museum eventually. Oh, okay. there we go. Not our old Gentoo. Oh my gosh, guys. Finally. Finally. The Japanese Cormorant. The Hairy Bald Raven. Ah, uh, scientific names.
wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. No, wait. Yeah, that's a Gen 2, too, actually. And... Yes, this one is new. I almost missed it. Gotta be careful about that. The good diver with the most golden of hair. That is splendid. Well, that about wraps it up for this time. Next time, we're gonna go show off the camera. See ya. Ran down, ran down here, then he hopped up onto the driver's seat at the lower steering station. And just like any boat captain, put her fin on the wheel and glanced out of the window to be sure the coast was clear. Harbor Patrol Deputy Jim Slicker captured this priceless moment on his digital camera as one of Newport's pesky residents attempted to commandeer the red fire boat. Listen as Slicker narrates the 42nd clip. At one point, he he honked the horn with his flipper, and he turned our blue light on, turned the nav lights on, turned the blower on by putting his flippers up on the <laughs> up on the dash. The young pup made a mess of the deputy's boat, climbing on the controls. At one point, throwing it into reverse. Sea lions are constantly intruding on boats in the bay, but this pinniped takeover was a first. She's a juvenile, though, so the guys went easy on her.